So today is the uh, second lecture on inverse design in photonics, where we uh, go into uh, the mathematical details of the adjoint variable method. So uh, here's a brief review of what we talked about last time. Uh, in the uh, optimization, uh, what you would like to do uh, is to adjust the parameter of a device uh, so that eventually the device operate uh, uh, for what you will want them to operate. For example, in the design of a matter surface, you may want to adjust some of the geometric parameters of each of the matter atom until a instant plane wave focus onto a point on the other side. So uh, the in this case then, uh, for this focusing problem, you can imagine a uh, cost function or that measures the device performance to be the intensity of light at the focal region. And the goal of the computational design is then to focus, uh, to focus is then to uh, maximize the intensity of light at the focal point. And for that purpose, you compute the derivative of this intensity at the focal point with respect to design parameters, for example, the radii of these uh, uh, circular looking or cylindrical looking matter atom. Once you know the gradient, then you move in the parameter space along the gradient direction until you reach an optimum uh, of the device. Uh, so this is a review. And uh, from this review, you can see one of the key steps in the uh, uh, in this optimization process uh, is to be able to compute the gradient. Uh, last time we talked about a uh, naive way to compute the gradient through finite difference, where the number of computation that you need to do scales linearly with the number of parameter that you need to consider. Uh, today, we're going to talk about the adjoint method, which is a remarkable method that the number of computation you do is essentially independent of number of the parameter that you are trying to adjust. So uh, to start, uh, let's first briefly review uh, how you would do the simulation. Um, the adjoint method is perhaps best to be presented in the frequency domain. So imagine that you are solving max equation at a single frequency. Then you can transform the max equation uh, into this form where E here is the electric field. The epsilon R here is a permittivity distribution. And the P here uh, denotes some of the sources. So uh, in other words, this is the equation that take a particular permittivity distribution, put in the source and generate the resulting electric field. Now, this is already in the form of a linear system where you have a matrix and the matrix here is the term here in the uh, bracket, uh, operates on a vector that is the electric field that's equal to a source. So uh, this linear system can be solved in a variety of different way. Uh, formally, uh, you can write a solution in terms of the inverse of the matrix times the right-hand side. Now I emphasize that in reality, very rarely do you actually form the inverse of the matrix. So we use this notation only to denote that we are solving this linear system in some way. As an example, uh, let's say you have a uh, square uh, piece of dielectric and you put a source on one side as indicated uh, by B here uh, that denote essentially how the source look like. Then if you solve this equation, you would get the electric field distribution as indicated on the right. Here again, you can see where the sources are and then the field then spread out over the entire computational cell. So starting uh, from this, what you would like to do is then to compute some objective function with respect to some parameter of the system. 
as a simple example here, uh, taken maybe uh, inspiration from that matter surface design problem where we're trying to maximize the intensity at a given point. Here, uh, we could imagine that our uh, objective function is just the intensity of the field at the measuring point as denoted by M. So in this case, in general, the objective function would have been a function of the electric field and perhaps it's a complex conjugate. For example, if you need to form an intensity, then you need a product of both the electric field and its complex conjugate. Now, in the present case, you can write this objective function essentially as total electric field projected onto the vector M that has a single non-zero only as a measuring point. So that forms your objective function. Once you have this objective function, then the intent of your computation uh, in computing the gradient for optimization purposes is then to compute the derivative of this objective function with respect to some parameter that you would like to tune. For example, in our case, it could be the permittivity at a certain point inside the square region. Now, the computation of this derivative as a starting point, you can just apply the chain rule. You say, well, I need to calculate the derivative of the objective function to a parameter p. Now, the dependency on the parameter p goes through the electric field. So in the chain rule, I first form the derivative to the electric field and then form the derivative of the electric field with respect to the parameter. I multiply them together. I apply that both for the electric field itself as well as its complex conjugate. And I will get an equation that looks like this. So the derivative of the objective function <coughs> to a parameter has two parts. One of them is the derivative of the objective function to the field, and the other one is the derivative of the field to the parameter. And we consider each of these terms separately. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, first, let's consider the derivative of the objective function to the electric field. In our case, this is just a simple product of the electric field and its complex conjugate. So if you take the derivative to the electric field, what you end up having is just a complex conjugate of the electric field. So uh, again, let me emphasize that these are electric field values that's already determined in the simulation that I show you, where we put the source here in the computational cell and compute the electric field everywhere. And this is just a computed electric field at the monitor point, taking the complex conjugate. Uh, also, one can compute the derivative of the electric field to the uh, control parameter. And this, uh, you can just take the original system equation, the linear system, take the derivative with respect to the parameter on either side of the equation. Now, for simplicity, we assume that the excitation source doesn't depend on these parameters, so the right-hand side is zero. The left-hand side is a product, and so you result in two of these terms. What we care about is the derivative of the field to the parameter. And taking the second equation, you can uh, simply formally write it as the inverse of the system matrix times something uh, on the right-hand side. Once you have this, you can then plug this back into the equation that we have derived on the derivative to a system parameter to obtain the gradient, uh, to obtain the entire gradient information, and that is this formula. So now let's discuss each of the term in this formula again to develop a way to efficiently evaluate the term inside the braces. So um, the 
inside the equation, there are uh, essentially four terms. The one on the left is the derivative of the objective function to the electric field. As we mentioned, that is just the complex conjugate of the field at that point. We then have the inverse of the system matrix that's come from the Maxwell equation. We have the derivative of the system matrix, which is back to the control parameter. And finally, we have the E. The E here is perhaps what we can call original field, is the field where we put the source in and compute the field distribution elsewhere. Now, to efficiently evaluate this product, one of the most important steps in the edge in the edge on variable method is to realize that the first two terms where you form the product can be evaluated by a system equation solving. So if you define the product of the first two terms here to be the adjoint electric field, then you can see that to obtain this adjoint electric field, in fact, all you need to do is to solve this linear equation. This linear equation, linear system equation, in this linear system equation, the matrix is the same as your original system. The only thing that's different is the source. In this case, the source is simply the derivative of the objective function with respect to the electric field. And as we mentioned, this is just the electric field at the monitor point in the original solution. So therefore, this can be done in exactly the same way as you have done by solving the original problem, but you just put the source elsewhere. Once you have done that, then the gradient calculation become simply a field overlap calculation. You take the original field, you take the adjoint field, and you form a overlap calculation with respect to this derivative of the system matrix to the control parameter. Now let's discuss a little bit of the derivative here in the middle. Uh, so uh, the derivative here is the system matrix to a control parameter. The system matrix coming from the Maxwell equation is this. And the first part of this doesn't depend on the permittivity. So you don't have to worry about in the derivative. And usually the derivative come from the permittivity distribution to some control parameter. So therefore, what shows up in the middle in the end is just a derivative of the permittivity to some control parameter. Uh, so as an example, let's say that you are interested in uh, varying in a particular box the permittivity uniformly. So in this case, you can take the derivative of the permittivity to the control parameter, but that also is the permittivity inside the same box. So the derivative here is just a delta function. And then when you put the delta function back in, all you have in the term in the braces are now just the overlap integral between the adjoint field and the original field. And so, uh, the general procedure in the adjoint variable method, therefore, can be summarized in this slide that consists of a three step. In the first calculation, you compute the original field, or sometimes called a forward field, which is the original simulation problem that you care about. You put a source in, you have a structure, and you want to know anything, for example, the field distribution inside the structure. Then in the second calculation, you do what's called the adjoint. In this case, you put a, for a given objective function, 
you generate the source distribution coming from the original field distribution in the point detection scheme that I talked about, for example, the source would be right at where you detect. Starting from the adjoint source, you then again solve the same Maxwell equation to obtain a field distribution. Once you have done this, you then take the overlap calculation between the adjoint and the forward fields in the region where you vary the parameter. And this allow you to compute the derivative of a cost function to the parameter in the system. As I mentioned, one of the most important innovation in the adjoint variable is that when you have large number of parameters, you can still repeat the same calculation with two full simulation, one forward, the other one adjoint, and to account for multiple parameters, you just need to form the overlap integral or the overlap between the forward and the adjoint in the region with respect to these parameters. So as a result, independent of the number of parameters that you are trying to vary to compute a gradient to these parameters, only two full simulation is needed. And this is very important in inverse design because no matter how many parameter you might have that you want to control, the complication cost does not change in each of these optimization steps. In inverse design, uh, the number of parameters that you may encounter may go up to maybe even millions. Uh, in that case, uh, it is essential that you perform these adjoint uh, variable calculation to compute the gradient in this million dimensional space. So uh, this concludes a brief introduction on the mathematics of the adjoint variable method. And in the next time, we're going to give an example of how to apply this to an actual optimization problem.